السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, Ramadan is a gift and the difficulty is it's coming to an end. So the question is, what did I make out of this month? A very important question. And the answer to it can never be negative because there are still a few days, right? So even if you have thought to yourself, and we all probably would, that I haven't done as much as I could have, then, well, there are a few more days remaining. If you're losing a football match, what do you do? You get serious towards the end and everyone starts screaming and yelling and cheering you on and mashallah, tabarakallah. You know that you've got to score. In this particular case, it's not like you're going to miss it if you are serious about it. You will score. You seek the forgiveness of Allah. Primarily what I want to achieve from Ramadan is the forgiveness of Allah. And the reason is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, وَيْلٌ لِمَنْ أَدْرَكَ رَمَضَانَ فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ Woe be upon the one who has witnessed the month of Ramadan and did not achieve forgiveness. That hadith goes to show that primarily what I'm supposed to get from Ramadan is forgiveness. If Allah forgives me, what happens? I earn his mercy. If I have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I get Jannatul Firdaus. I get paradise, subhanallah. So... Ultimately, you and I would like to go to Jannah. We would like to go to paradise. That's why there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ wherein he says that every night of Ramadan, there are people whom Allah chooses and he gives them his forgiveness. He frees them from hellfire, which means he writes their names from among those whom the fire will not touch. So someone asked me, look, what if I am a young person and subhanallah, I achieve that I'm on that list. So Allah has written my name from among those whom the hellfire will not touch. That happens every single night, right, of Ramadan. So we ask Allah to have our names written, not just once, but a few times, inshallah, we've seen so many Ramadans. But the question from this young man was, say I'm young and my name is now on that list. What if I do nasty things after that? Well, the answer to it is, if Allah has put your name on that list, by His will and mercy, He will protect you because of your seriousness and dedication to Him. He will protect you from engaging in that which would not have made you deserve that list. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I made it on the list tonight. May Allah make it that we all are on that list. And remember, any deed Allah can look at, have mercy on you, write your name and your set alhamdulillah if i make it on that list by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will make sure that i because of my dedication my love of allah and the fact that i keep trying will not do things that would make me such a person that would have to be removed from that list because there's no removing from that list once you're on it so one of the ways of knowing that you're on that list, inshallah, although you can never know for certain, is if your life changes with Ramadan. So Ramadan came in and I was not such a good person. But when Ramadan exited, I've changed four or five major things in my life so that I can earn the mercy and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a beautiful month of Ramadan. What acceptance, what amazing forgiveness, what mercy of Allah and what freedom from hellfire have I just achieved. That's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'd like you to pause for a moment and ask Allah, ask Allah. Firstly, what would you like to ask Allah? I can tell you. You, we'd like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist and help our brothers and sisters in Gaza and in Palestine. That's the first thing. Before I even ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on me, I ask Allah to have mercy on our brothers and sisters in Palestine and in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings, our weakness, our inability. May Allah Almighty really forgive the ummah for the fact that they have failed our own brothers and sisters who are dying as we speak of hunger. Hunger. Imagine people prohibiting food and drink from humankind. Whereas in Islam, we're taught that even if there is a dog and you happen to quench its thirst, you will get the mercy of Allah. You will achieve the favor of Allah because you cared for an animal. 
That's what we're taught as Muslims. But one wonders who and where and which faith and which moral values teach that you need to stop food and drink from innocent people, from an entire population. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them what they deserve. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly forgive our shortcomings. Then we ask Allah for mercy upon all of us. Forgiveness for all of us. Jannatul Firdaus, paradise. May Allah have mercy on us. May Allah free us from hellfire. May Allah love even a single deed that we've done, just like he loved the deed of the one who was kind to a cat and the other one who quenched the thirst of a dog. Tonight, we are here together. Thousands of us. We will ask Allah Almighty and we will continue to ask him throughout the evening. You can start right now while I'm talking to you. It's not wrong to continue to ask Allah while you're listening to me, but you're making a dua. You're making a dua for whatever needs to be, inshallah, met by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, the mercy of Allah is what I ask for. Now, if you recall, you may have heard, and I am one of those who have said it some time back, that in Ramadan, you have forgiveness of Allah, the mercy of Allah, and freedom from hellfire, right? Those three things. The division of those three into the first ten, the second ten, and the third ten is what is not authentic. Because there are clear-cut authentic narrations that prove that the mercy of Allah is throughout Ramadan, not just specialized for a particular ten. The freedom from hellfire is throughout Ramadan every night. Allah has those whom he frees from hellfire every single night, not just on 10 nights. And Allah's mercy, Allah's forgiveness and the freedom from hellfire happens on all of those nights. So I just wanted to repeat it, to correct it because we do hear it often. And in fact, some of us like myself, some time back, I actually said these words. So we need to rectify it and correct it to say, you know what? It's throughout Ramadan. May Allah Almighty grant us his mercy, grant us his forgiveness and grant us freedom from hellfire. This evening, we will also be given an opportunity to donate towards good causes and inshallah, one of the causes will also be that of our brothers and sisters who are struggling in Palestine, in Gaza. May Allah Almighty use us to continue to do lots and lots of good. Why I say this is because what we do in Ramadan in terms of goodness will be multiplied by reward or in reward by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how many times? Not just 10, not just 70, not just 700 but beyond that, Allah knows your intention, Allah knows your condition, Allah knows what you wanted, and Allah will reward you between you and Him. So continue to do lots of good deeds in this last 10 nights of Ramadan. In fact, last few nights of Ramadan, there are only about five more nights. May Allah Almighty accept them from us and accept whatever we've done already. Now, Another very interesting thing is ibadah in the month of Ramadan is such that it takes a lot from a person. Allah wants you to engage in night prayer in Ramadan. Allah wants you to engage in extra activity. Remember, it's the month of the Quran. It's the month of Taraweeh. A few weeks ago, I was counting how many things Ramadan is a month of. And I counted about 20 things and we were still counting. It's the month of mercy, the month of forgiveness, the month of victory. Do you realize some of the battles took place like the battle of Badr, the victory against all odds happened in the month of Ramadan when the battle of Badr took place. And I tell you, against all odds, our brothers and sisters will also be victorious. It's another month of Ramadan. May Allah Almighty grant us victory upon victory. It's a month of dedication to prayer because you add extra voluntary prayers but Allah rewards you so much that he tells you this is going to be the reward how are you going to miss out something when Allah's giving you so much reward that's why taraweeh very important you're supposed to enjoy the beautiful prayer of taraweeh you're supposed to mashallah you know love the fact that you're prolonging in prayer unfortunately with us with us what happens is we start getting edgy and agitated. And I know many masjids where 
people pick on the lighting, they pick on the windows, they pick on the heating, they pick on the cooling, they pick on the sound, they pick on the imam, they pick, but they have to pick on something. They have to pick on something. I just like to be a person who doesn't pick on anything, just enjoy the recital. If you're in charge, then you should try and correct everything so people don't pick. But ima imagine I came about here, someone told me it's going to be very cold in this venue. So I wore two pairs of socks and my shoes didn't fit me, so I put on slops. So I said, you know what, I've defeated the purpose anyway. However, I came in here and the warmth of the hearts of the people has really brightened up this place and at the same time given it some beautiful feeling. I didn't need these two pairs of socks. May Allah Almighty grant us warmth of the heart. May Allah Almighty help us to care for one another. I want to give you a quick one. You see, the ummah, we are supposed to be caring for one another. If something is happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza, it should hurt us. You notice the lighting here? We lit it up in certain colors. You should be knowing what those colors are. But nonetheless, if you don't have a feeling for those who are right next to you right now, what feeling are you going to have for those across the continents? So it begins here. We are seated in our thousands. Do you feel a connection? Do you feel the love? Are you here to sacrifice so that another person can have a smile on their faces or at least they are not harmed from you? Tonight, I want you to promise that you will make sure that never does any harm come from you to another person by the will of Allah. The way you speak to people, the way you interact with them, the way you are with them, be it at home with your spouse, with your children, with your parents, with your siblings, with your uncles and aunts, with your in-laws or outlaws, whoever they are. Trust me, if you promise that harm will not come from you to another person, you finally understood the meaning of Assalamu Alaikum. You finally understood the meaning of Assalamu Alaikum. I'm a Muslim. I walk in, I greet Assalamu Alaikum. The brothers told me, we don't have much time, you need to go straight onto the stage. So we won't be able to greet people. Two guys tried to greet me. And guess what I did? I had to break the protocol and greet them. Because I couldn't bear the pain that they might have felt as they were being ushered away. No, no. I mean, come on. But then I was worried that others might get up and rush. So I kept on looking down and walking because of love. It's love. That's what it is. So don't blame me if, for example, I walked past and I happened to just wave at you without shaking your hand. Because you know what? Sometimes it's humanly impossible. Nonetheless, when I say assalamu alaikum to you, I mean I guarantee you I will not harm you. What does peace be upon you actually mean? What peace? I'm talking of holistic peace. Peace be upon you from Allah. May peace be upon you from me. I'm not going to harm you. The type of peace I can offer you, it's going to be there. What peace Allah can give you is actually holistic. Allah will give you contentment and so much more. The most beautiful, most amazing greeting ever is Assalamu alaikum. Tahiyatuhum yawma yalqawnahu salam. The greeting on that day when they meet with Allah will be salam, peace. Subhanallah. So be conscious of the fact that you are saying assalamu alaikum. What's the point of assalamu alaikum? And then you dagger the person as they turn around. You say, you know what? Rotten person. And you walked away. Why did you have to say salam if that's how you felt? In fact, the reason I raise all of this is because to show a concern for your brothers and sisters begins at home. It begins here. It begins with those around you, those you interact with. Allah places people in your life, makes you pass people on the street. Designed by Him. It was not just a mere coincidence. Designed by Allah. You passed a certain person or you crossed paths with someone or you're in a situation or you're sitting next to someone right now. You know what? You're going to have to bear patience regarding a few things maybe. They might be an asset or they might not be. The Prophet ﷺ tells us about the masjid. That when you go to the masjid, make sure there's no foul smell coming from you. If you've eaten a, something strong, eaten garlic. You know, garlic sauce is a condiment that a lot of us really enjoy when you're dipping the right thing in that sauce. Sorry for speaking about it just before we're opening our fast, but it's one of those things. And you dip it and what happens? Your mouth, you don't realize, you enjoyed it, but you go to someone, salama. 
as you want to open your mouth and the person is like, oh, you saying salamu alaikum, it's more like smell alaikum, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Allah tells us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that if you're coming to the masjid, make sure you've gargled, you've eaten onion or garlic or something strong. If that is the case, and it is, what about if your perspiration is really, you know, on 99.9, .9, what would you have to do? Wallahi, you'd have to ensure that you're smelling good, you know, perfume or something decent or an underarm earlier on in the day so that when you come, you're okay. You're not harming people with your, what you call a scent, but they might call a stench. And why I say that is because some people enjoy onion, but they don't realize, wow, that was so good. The next person doesn't think the same. So we need to be so conscious of a smell, a foul smell as believers. Imagine if you're harming them with your mouth, with your words, and physically. How would that be? Don't you see that the blessed teachings of Islam are such that we would be the biggest assets to those whom we interact with on a daily basis. Biggest assets. If you pass me on the path by the will of Allah, I will ensure that somehow you have a pleasant experience. May Allah make us that way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us that way. So Ramadan is a month of caring for others, thinking about others. When I don't have food, I, I thank Allah for giving me the ability to see how it feels or to feel the feeling of those who perhaps don't have food, not out of choice, but they are starving. What will I do? Am I going to reach out to them? I give something inshallah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave me an opportunity to reach out or to feel and to think about others in different situations and scenarios. We have homes, we have clothes, we have so much more. I told you about the two pairs of socks that I just wore because I was told how cold it was. There are others who don't know what socks, what a pair of socks is. There are people who actually have no access to, to warm clothing at all. What am I going to do about it? You might say, well, you know, I'm still not working yet and I still don't have... Wallahi, you have a pound or two pounds, don't you? Or you have some old clothes, don't you? Try and check where to give it instead of throwing them away. Check. There are people who will then send it to places where they don't have those clothings. And this is why when you are buying clothing, make sure you are buying that which you will not be embarrassed to donate to those in need when you have to now pass the clothing on. But if you are buying clothing, and I'm not going to pick on any gender in particular here, but if you're buying clothing that is such that when you are done with it, you will be so embarrassed to donate it to the next person, then maybe you need to up your wardrobe game and make it a little bit more, or should I say a little bit less embarrassing in that instance. A little bit more compliant by the will of Allah. You might argue, what about my underwear? Okay, let's not talk about that, inshallah. May Allah Almighty forgive us and grant us ease. And uh, we're talking about what's beyond that by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Almighty truly make us from those who care for one another. Those who can reach out, those who can fast. Imagine the hadith says, Man sama Ramadana imanan wahtisaban. Whoever fasts Ramadan with conviction and expecting a reward from Allah. I'm going to stand this night, inshallah, in ibadah. I'm going to do something extra. It's possible. It could be Laylatul Qadr. So I'm going to stand in extra prayer. I'm not going to get upset. Even if it's a little bit extra prayer, a few extra duas, perhaps Allah will write my name from those who are free from hellfire and Allah will forgive me. I promise you that thought is ihtisab. It is accounts. You are, what are you doing? You are actually believing in Allah, expecting a reward from Allah, and you actually know that if Allah accepts this, this is what I'm going to get for it. So I'm trying hard that it is accepted in the best possible way. Now I'm going to stand in prayer. And as much as the imams are taught to go easy on the crowd, the crowd is taught to enjoy the recitation of the imam, try to listen and try to enjoy whatever is being recited. May Allah Almighty make it easy for us this evening, inshallah. I really appreciate the fact that everyone is seated here. It's unbelievable if you're outside. It's unbelievable to imagine that there are so many thousand beyond maybe nine, ten thousand, perhaps maybe beyond, I don't know the exact figure, in this particular venue because there is so much of silence and there is so much of goodness. And inshallah, I pray 
that that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm looking at some of the faces of the brothers here right in the front and I'm wondering, I wonder what time you guys came here. Mashallah. Two, three hours ago? Two hours ago. Mashallah. That's not too bad. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. And uh, may Allah accept it from you. There are so many who said they would come immediately after work and they would join us. I pray that we have a good evening. Now, let's be very conscious of the fact that we are so many in number. When the food does come, let's try, let's try and do what? Munch it as soon as possible. No, no, no. When the food comes, let's understand we're not the only ones. Try to ensure everyone has a meal. Try to ensure that everyone has a meal. I'm sure there's more than the number that is here, but it's a matter of logistics. Just ensure that everyone has a meal. Let's not be selfish. And let's ensure that we give the others or make sure that everyone has, and we will also have by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, I've noticed in past events that people pick on two negatives that they might have noticed and they forget about the positive. So they discourage others from attending. Don't do that. Speak about the millions of positives they are. I promise you the ummah at the moment needs gatherings where the identity of a Muslim is confirmed and is solidified and strengthened and you feel a sense of belonging to an ummah. We need that so desperately as an ummah. Now, in this time, in our history, and that's the reason why we actually arrange and organize events like this. When you come together and your identity as a Muslim, mashallah, you feel proud of it, and you strengthen, or it is strengthened that you are a member of an ummah. Do you know that at a time of weakness of the, of the entire ummah, Getting together is one of the ways of strengthening yourselves. And this is why there is something in Islam known as al-jumu'atu wal-jama'atu. Jumu'ah is the Friday prayer, the Friday, the day, and the prayer as well. And jama'ah means the gathering. We gather every day, five times a day for prayers, and it's recommended to gather. If you don't have an excuse, you should be. And on a Friday, you must come together. Come what may, you must come together. What's the purpose? Well, what I just mentioned now, there are so many purposes and so many reasons. One of them is the strength of the ummah, the sense of belonging, the fact that you care for one another, you get to know one another, you see one another, and you pray for one another. May Allah Almighty strengthen all of us. I know that there are a few more minutes remaining. I, my time is up, and inshallah, I hope to join you for the iftar and for the rest of the evening. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.